Y'all, I am a woman on a mission. I'll tell you more about it in a second. First, we have to harvest. So I'm out in the jungle garden. I'm looking for something that I haven't picked much of yet so far. I've been picking my peas when they're dry like this, where you open them up and the peas are already shriveled up and dried out. And once they've hit this point, they're great for storing because you can literally, I usually put them on a, on a cookie sheet to make sure that they're completely dry for a couple days, but then you can just put them right in a jar um, or a bag or whatever you're gonna do and put them in the pantry. But some people don't like to do this. Some people like to pick them whenever they are still nice and soft inside. Now, I don't typically do this very much uh, simply because of the time commitment of shelling fresh peas. They are really good. Uh, with the dry ones, you kind of need to soak them before you use them to reconstitute them like you would any other dried beans. But I saw a recipe in a magazine today, and so I'm looking to pick a lot of these peas fresh so that I can have four cups once they're shelled. All right, the camera got abandoned because that's hard to navigate. It's getting very weedy. Here I have quite a bit of peas as well as some okra. The next thing I need, I need some herbs and cherry tomatoes. The garden, now the peas and okra are still like in full swing. I've got lots of these, but the cherry tomatoes are coming to an end. A lot of the herbs have bolted. I probably need a little bit more okra. Um, I'm gonna check some of the other plants. But uh, even at the end of the season garden, <laughs> I'm still enjoying the fact that if I see a summer recipe in a magazine while I'm waiting in a waiting room, I can look through all the ingredients and go, I can make that out of my yard. <laughs> it's a good feeling. So I know I have some more okra over here. It's different varieties, but that's fine. The next wave of peas has quite a lot on it, but they're not ready to be picked yet, even early. So while I am harvesting okra, I haven't harvested in the last day or two. I don't think Will has either. There's some that have gotten really big. When I see those, I just cut them off and let them fall. Because that essentially tells this plant that it's not done with its job yet. Uh, if I let those dry out and go to seed, even though they're too big to eat, uh, letting them go to seed would signal to the plant that I don't want any more okra. And I would hate to send such a untrue message. All right, I have a chair for you guys to sit in. <laughs> Enjoy the view, I'm gonna harvest okra. I can't do it one-handed, it's hard enough. Uh, Two-handed, it's so itchy. And now, the cherry tomatoes. All right, that'll do. To the kitchen. When it's 100 degrees outside, um, it's close, yeah. If it's not there, it's very close. Uh, <laughs> Bim said 100, actually. Coming inside feels like heaven, <laughs> so good. All right, so I'm going to shell these peas. Um, I grabbed them at a few different stages just because I didn't have a whole lot to choose from. But, so they're gonna look a little bit different. Some of the peas are gonna be a little more plump than others, maybe just slightly tinged green, and some are gonna be a little on the drier side, but I'm gonna get these shelled so I can put this recipe together. All right, we're almost done. Should I? Toby's 
finishing up some shelling here. I've got to cut my okras in half and my cherry tomatoes in half as well. So typically when you cook cow peas or field peas, um, the most common field pea or cow pea is black eyed pea. Still a very southern thing. Uh, typically when you cook those you use some sort of like meat uh, for fat and they're really seasoned and you long slow cook them till they're a little like like there's a good broth that they're in. Um, I love cow peas. But this recipe that I saw today, um, I'll find the magazine. It was just like one of those free local publications. <laughs> was for a quick cooked cow pea that you then mix in charred okra and uh, tomatoes and herbs and then a dressing. So it's sort of like peas and sort of saladish. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's gonna be really good. So I'm boiling some water. I'm getting this pan hot because I'm gonna char this okra and the tomatoes in here. Y'all, okra that's cut in half, this is a tiny one, and charred, no salt on it, change your life. So easy and so good. It doesn't take very long. Of course, I like to eat it raw. I guess you could cook it a little longer if you wanted it softer. It was the charred okra in this recipe that made me want to come home and cook it because I knew it was going to be good if it had charred okra in it. All right, peas are going in for probably seven or eight minutes till they're soft. This is a first for me. I am actually charring tomatoes. See, um, I've got them cut in half face down in this hot cast iron pan. Um, after they're charred, I'm going ahead and sprinkling a little salt on them. And I just want to try one because I've never done this before. Now I like burst tomatoes where you take a bunch of cherry tomatoes and you just put them in a pan and stir them until they break open. But this, this is different. Let's see. It's very good. Tastes exactly as you would expect. Like a warm cherry tomato that's got a little bit of charred bits on it. <laughs> it's going to be really good in this recipe. All right, got I got my lightly cooked peas. And for the dressing, here's the thing. This was in like a free magazine. It had tomatoes on the front. It was about food. Edible Columbia. I went in a coffee shop today after a doctor's appointment. I saw the tomatoes, I grabbed it. I opened up to this recipe and was like, I have to make that. So I'm gonna do some lemon juice. I don't have any fresh lemons, but I keep uh, lemon juice in the fridge just in case I need something for a recipe like this and I don't have time to get it ahead of time. It says the juice of two lemons, so I'm just kind of guessing. Um, I need a half a cup of olive oil. I'm gonna open the mustard. <laughs> okay, hold on. I, I thought it, but I had it right. Well, okay, we'll do it like this. It said a teaspoon, so I'm gonna do more than that because I like flavor. <laughs> and then uh, it says lemon zest. I'm not gonna have that. I don't have it. It says parsley, thyme, mint, plus additional. I'm actually gonna use some cilantro because I really like cilantro, and I have this in my fridge, and it needs to be used. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna whip this together. Oh, I haven't put olive oil in it. Okay, now I have the olive oil. So let me mix this up good with lemon juice and olive oil. It's going to emulsify when you mix it and make a really nice dressing. And it, I'm gonna just salt to taste. All right. And let's mix it all together. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this. Guys, this looks so good. All right, 
Taste test time. I'm so excited. I've literally been thinking about this whole thing because it looks so good. And yes, I'm eating directly out of the bowl that I'm going to feed my family from, but you know, I gave birth to five of them and the other one, you don't even want to know what he gets them to. <laughs> All right, you guys ready? Oh, I'm so excited. It's everything that I dreamed it would be. You want to try it, Toby? I'll give it a try. Okay, come here. Okay, I'm gonna give you. No, you're not a big fan of tomatoes. Yeah, I don't so want go... any tomatoes. So I'm gonna go light on this, okay? Okay, I know you're not a real big fan of tomatoes, so I'm gonna go light. I'm gonna give you an okra and a couple of peas. Okay. That's actually pretty good. Are you about to spit it out? Mm -mm. <laughs> ben, you want to try? Taste test. What is it? It is peas, okra, and tomatoes. Let me see. I'm gonna give you a good bite. Okay, you ready? Okay. Mm. <laughs> is that good? It's delicious. That seemed a little sus. Did you say what? Like ketchup. It tastes like ketchup. It does have this vinegar Dijon mustard in it. I'll build my own bite. You'll build your own bite. Yeah, I want that chunk of those build tomatoes in there. Piece. One tiny little tomato. Those are all too big. There's no tiny little one. <laughs> you gotta freeze. get the okri. I'm good. Oh. <laughs> okay. So bossy. You ready? I'm not bossy. I'm just aggressively helpful. <laughs> oh yeah, so good. <laughs> Actually, with a properly cooked uh, New York strip, that would be delicious. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thank you guys for hanging out with me today and making this much anticipated recipe. I'll type it out for you. Put a link to it down below. Thank you for hanging out with us. We bless you. Until oh, next time. <laughs>